Welcome to the Corp Vault channel. In our previous video, we discussed in job management, job priorities and job restart tabs. In this video, we will continue discussing the other tabs and available options in them. Please like, share, comment or suggest. Subscribe for more videos and you can follow us on Instagram. The next tab to discuss is job updates. From here, you can modify how often information must be updated for data protection, data recovery, or data collection operations in the job details window. Job update interval. Agent type lists the agent types that are available. Let's say DB2. Protection, in minutes, is the time interval, by which data protection, or data collection operation details, of an agent are updated in the job details window. By default, it is set to 5 minutes, but if needed, you can change the value as desired. The lower it is set, the quicker the details get updated, in the job details window, but also adds load on the ComServe. So, if the ComServe is already loaded, then do not increase more load, by lowering the value. If possible, keep it higher. Recovery, in minutes, is the time, by which an agent type state recovery operation details, are updated in the job details window. As discussed, if required you can change the value. Changes made to the protection time interval, or recovery time interval will not affect job updates, that is, the job controller displaying real-time information from active jobs. State update interval for continuous data replicator, is the time interval, at which continuous data replicator, will transfer replication logs from the source computer, to the destination computer. This will happen, when there has not been sufficient change activity to fill the log and cause automatic transfer. The last tab to discuss is, job status on errors. Using this window, we can create and enable, error decision and threshold rules for an agent, to control the status of backup jobs, that occur at the ComCell and client computer level. Group category, lists the agents, that support error decision and threshold rules. We have four different agents listed, that is, file system, cloud apps, Microsoft SQL Server, and SharePoint Server. Select each agent, for which you want to create decision or threshold rules. Let's start with Windows File System. Enable is selected by default, which means the agent will apply the decision and or threshold rules at the end of the backup operation. Use the error decision and or error threshold tabs to specify the type of rule that you want to create. Error decision. This tab is to view, create and edit error decision rules. These rules are useful if you want to control the error codes occurring during backup as well as the file path pattern of the data. Click Add, to access the Add Job Error Decision Rule window, which allows you, to add a new decision rule, for the selected Windows File System agent. Use this window to add, or modify, error decision rules for Windows File System agent, Unix File System agent, and Cloud Apps agents, like Amazon S3, and Azure Blob Storage. Use the Enable option to disable or enable the rule, at the end of the backup operation. File Pattern When defining a file pattern, ensure the files to be backed up, do not have wildcards specified in their file names. All File Pattern Select this option, to include all file patterns. To define custom pattern, clear this option, and use user defined pattern. In user defined pattern, Specify the path, and format of the files. For example, if you want to define a file pattern for a specific file, or directory. 
Please note, error decision rules do not support UNC paths. The maximum number of characters for a file pattern, allowed by the Windows and Unix file systems is, 1024. System error code. All error codes. Select this option, to include all error codes for the decision rule. If you wish to define the error codes range, then clear this option, and specify the error code range in, from value 2, to value. Example, from value 1, to value 50. Skip from reporting error. Select this option, to skip all error codes, matching the decision rules from reporting the error. On error, mark job as. Select the status from the drop-down list, that you want to assign to the job, if the decision rule is matched. Please note, for Unix agent, if complete is selected, but a job fails, because the subclient content path does not exist, or cannot be scanned, the completed with one or more errors status is assigned to the job. Once done, click OK, to create the decision rule. The decision rule parameters are displayed here. Priority, indicates the precedence of the decision rule. File pattern, file types, specifies the path and format of the files. System error code, specifies the defined error codes. On error, mark job as, specifies the status to mark the job, if the decision rule is matched. Enable, from here you can select to enable, or disable the decision rule. Select the decision rule, and click delete. To delete the selected decision rule. Likewise, select the decision rule, and click edit, to edit the selected decision rule. Let's discuss for SQL Server Agent. Click add, to access the add job error threshold rule window. Select enable checkbox, to apply decision rule at the end of the backup operation. Mark database as. Select a status from the drop-down menu, to mark the database, when the rule is matched to the database error conditions you have chosen. Database is not online. Select this option, to mark the database as the status selected above, if a database is not in online state. Databases skipped during backup. Select this option, to mark the database as the status selected above. If a database is skipped during a backup operation, mark job as. Select a job status from the drop down list to update the job when a rule is matched. No database is qualified for backup. Select this option to mark the job as the status selected in the mark job as option. Once done, click OK to create the error decision rule. The rule parameters are displayed here. Use the delete option, to delete the selected error decision rule, or, use the edit option, to edit the decision rule. Let's now discuss the file system error threshold. Use this tab to view, create, and edit, error threshold rules. These rules are useful, if you want to control the amount of files that fail to back up. This option is very useful, when you see jobs with lot of failed files, and those are valid ones, and you want to mark them with job status completed, instead of completed with errors. Do note, this would be affecting the entire com cell. As you see there is one error threshold, which is predefined. Let's check what it has. Select the rule, and click edit. These are the predefined settings. You can edit this rule if needed. Let's create a new one. Click Add, to open Add Job Error Threshold Rule window. As discussed before, use Enable option to enable, disable the threshold rule, at the end of the backup operation. Mark Job As. Select the status from the drop-down menu, to update the job if the threshold rule is matched. Number of failed files is more than. 
specify the number of files that should fail during backup to activate this rule. Percentage of failed files is more than. Specify the percentage of files that should fail during backup to activate this rule. Apply threshold when in rules match. Select if the threshold rule from the drop down menu that should be activated when any or all rule criteria are matched. Once done, click OK to create the rule. The threshold rule parameters are displayed here. Count indicates the number of failed backup files that will activate this rule. Percentage indicates the percentage of failed backup files that will activate this rule. On error, mark job as specifies the status to mark the job if the threshold rule is matched. Rule 4 indicates that the rule will be activated if any or all rule criteria is matched. Enable is to enable, disable the threshold rule. The last to review is SharePoint Server Error Decision Rule. Click Add to launch the Add Job Error Decision Rule window. Enable, disable this option to apply decision rule at the end of the backup operation. Enter document type. Select this option to enter all or selected document types for which you want to create the decision rules. All file types option is to define rule for all the file types. Clear the all file types checkbox to define rule for specific file types in the user defined type. Example, for a site, if the failed file is either a DWP file extension or a web part file extension, give the pattern as .dwp or .web part, respectively. SharePoint blocked file type. Select this option to change the completed with errors status of the backup job caused due to blocked SharePoint files. On error, mark job as. Select a status from the drop-down list to update a backup job status if the rule is matched. We will end this video here. Please hit the like button if you like this video and subscribe to our channel if not already done so. Thank you. Do subscribe for more videos.